All right, Shalom. I want to first start off giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakaf Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit, and peace and blessings on to the elect of the nation of Israel, which is us so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We make up the biblical 12th tribe to the nation of Israel. This is the brother Abadi from the GMS Houston camp, and I'm here with another lesson. And I'm going to go into the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Uh, uh, this chapter has been broken down by different brothers. I believe the Apostle Ramla uh, went into this and broke it down. I know the brothers in Dallas like to go into this and have went into this uh, chapter. Okay. Now, um, Paul had to write this, you know, um, because you had... Israelites during this time period that were still doing those animal sacrifices, okay? Because according to the to the law, if we committed certain uh, sin, we had to bring animal sacrifice for the for the remission of our sin. So you had Israelites that were still doing that and didn't understand that they did they no longer uh, needed to do that because the sacrifice that Yahweh made had fulfilled uh, or done away with us having to bring animal sacrifices before uh, the Heavenly Father. Now, um, that's what Matthew 5 and 17 is talking about. And let me read it real quick. It says, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, Matthew 5, 17. It says, think not that I am come to Destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill, fulfill what? Fulfill the law or sacrifice. And to fulfill the prophecies written about them. Now, uh, let's get into it. Get straight into it. This is Hebrews 9 and 1. And I'm not going to sit and break down every verse. Because a lot of this is self-explanatory, but I will hit certain precepts. For certain verses, Hebrews 9 and 1, then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service. The first covenant was um, the agreement that well, we, uh, we agreeing to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, and the Most High was going to give us by us keeping the law, we would get the uh, the promises. Everything that's written of in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, from the first verse on to what it was it was it what is it the uh, the 13th verse I believe, okay, and, and much more. It says that first covenant had ordinances of divine service and who were the uh, who was responsible for the uh, the service of the Most High? The Levites. Okay? Started with Moses, Aaron, and uh, Aaron's sons to be the high priests, and then the Levites to hold different positions within the the uh, the temple or the tabernacle to uh, do the service of the Most High. Right? It says, and a worldly uh, sanctuary, meaning the, uh, the, the temple or the, the tabernacle, okay? And then verse 2, it says, for there was a tabernacle made first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. So it's going into the order of how the uh, the tabernacle was uh, set up. All right, this is what all is um, all that we're about to read is going to to describe that. It says, and after the second veil, the uh, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, where only the high priest could go, right, to um, to make a sacrifice for his sin. And for the sins of the nation of Israel. And it was done uh, once. Once a year. 
It says, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. This was all in the uh, the holy of uh, holy. Okay, the holiest of all. That behind that the second veil. It says, and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat. Because that was where the Most High's present was supposed to uh, be in that mercy seat. And, uh, you know, the uh, high priest was to offer up that sacrifice for himself and also for the nation of Israel before the Most High. It says, of which we cannot now speak particularly. It says, now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always in the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of the most high so this is not this is uh just the other priest not the high priest doing different sacrifices but not the ultimate sacrifice for for the nation uh next verse is going to go into it it says but in the second went the high priest alone once every year with uh not without blood so he had to yeah because blood sacrifices needed for atonement right of sin it says which is offered for himself and for the heirs of the people the holy spirit or the holy ghost which is the holy spirit this uh signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Meaning what? That uh, the holiest of all was yet not made uh, manifest, which is Yahweh that high priest through the order of Melchizedek well, that was going to make the, uh, the sacrifice once and for all. Okay. Before the most high. For his, first for him his sins and then for the for the uh the peoples all right that couldn't happen while the first tabernacle was yet uh standing it says which was a figure for the time then present in which were uh offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the uh, the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Right. Because we were, according to Romans 8 and 20, the creature was made subject to vanity. So we were going to keep going off. So continual, even the high priest. Okay. So we were going to need continual sacrifice or the high priest to go in there and make those continual sacrifices every year for himself and for the uh, the people. Right, it says, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances uh, imposed on them until the time of reformation. And you know, Yahweh brought that reformation. It says, but Mashiach, being come in high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, and that tabernacle is us, we're the tabernacle now. Okay, and it, the Most High is um, dwelling within us, according to. Matter of fact, let's get uh, scriptures on that. Believe in Ephesians four. Goes into this. Also, you know, you read First uh, Corinthians three and nine. It talks about we are the uh, the temple of the Most High. In the most matter of fact, we're gonna get it after this. Let's see if uh I can find the right verse. Give me a second to find it, Salaki. Okay, I found it. Uh this is in Ephesians 2. And I'm going to read verse uh, 21. And you read the whole chapter to get the uh, full understanding. It 
So let's bring it out. I had to just uh, almost got a, a duo that FaceTime coming in on this uh, video. I had to hurry up and put it on uh, airplane mode. So this is uh, Ephesians 1 and 21. It says, In whom all the building fitly framed together, uh, grow it on, uh, unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye uh, also are built together. And we are built together. The scriptures tell us in First uh, Peter 2 and 5 that we are, uh, we are lively stones. Matter of fact, we're going to get that here in just a minute, too. It says, In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of the Most High through the Spirit. So the Most High is supposed to dwell in us. Scriptures also say, Where, the, where two or three are gathered in my name, Yahweh Shai shall be in the, in the midst. Let's get First Peter. Let me take it off airplane mode. Right, this first Peter 2 and 5, it says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, or in other words, a temple or a tabernacle, and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Most High by Yahweh Shah Mashiach. And I also quoted uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, 3 and 9. And let's bring that out. Then we'll get right back to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 9. It says, For we are laborers together with the Most High. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So we're the building. We don't need that physical building, okay, that we had, a physical tabernacle that we had under the, uh, the first covenant, okay? It's all spiritual now. Okay, it says, um, let's read Hebrews 9 and 11 again. It says, but Yahweh shall I being come and high priest. And let me put this back on airplane mode. But Yahweh shall I being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Right, his body and his body was uh, without sin. You see? A man that committed no sin. It says, not made with hands. That is to say, uh, not of this building. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. See? When Yahweh sacrificed, this is the sacrifice that Yahweh made. That so that we wouldn't have to continue to bring these different sacrifices to the temple, all right, and that uh, uh, for forgiveness of sins, and that the high priest wouldn't have to go into the most holiest part of the temple behind the second veil and offer up sins for himself and for the nation uh, once a year. This is uh, Hebrews nine and thirteen. For if the for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Mashiach, who through the eternal spirit offered, him, offered himself without spot to the Most High, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living. Purge your conscience from the dead from the dead works to serve the living power. It says, uh, and a lot answers a lot more, you know. It was that perfect sacrifice. So perfect that it only needed to be sacrificed once. Our Lord Yahweh shot. All right, uh, Hebrews 9 and 15, it says, For this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, or in other words, a new covenant. It says that by means of death, the redemption of the transgressions 
that were under the first testament, whose transgressions were under the first testament? The Israelites. Letting us know right here in this verse that salvation is only for the nation Israel, that the Lord came on the scene only to die for the nation Israel. Let's read this verse again. For this cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament or covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions, the transgressions of who? The transgressions of the Israelites that were under the first covenant. Those were the only ones under the first, I mean, under the first testament. And the ones that were under the first testament or covenant were the Israelites. It says that which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Right? Because through the, uh, the it's really by promise, okay? We're going to receive the uh, inheritance. All right? But the scriptures tell us that if we were to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfect, we would get, we would get the uh, inheritance. For, for, uh, right? So we're going to, we're going to get the inheritance by promise and we're going to also get the inheritance from keeping the law, statutes, and commandments perfect. But first is by promise, you know, then because we're going to be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments perfect forever, we're going to receive that inheritance, you know, uh, for eternity. Let's read on. It says, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For the testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester live it. Just like, uh, yeah, we couldn't receive the benefits of, you know, the covenant of keeping the covenant, keeping the law, statutes and commandments agreeing to keep the yeah you know agreeing to the covenant the contract all right without first the blood of them animals those animals being uh dead and they their blood uh pretty much officiating the the uh the covenant making the covenant official right then we could receive those um the inheritance the blessing Right. And we did receive the inheritance, you know, the land and we were blessed. We had cattle and all these things, but that wasn't for eternity. It says, whereupon the first testament was dedicated with without. I'm sorry, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Now. We go, you read uh, Exodus 24. And starting around verse five, and it goes into us getting the uh, the the the, uh, the covenant, the first covenant, right? And it was the whole deal was sealed or made official by the blood of the um, animals, right? So same thing for the second covenant. That's a blood sacrifice is needed to make. The, the, the second testament uh, official to where we can get that eternal inheritance. This is Hebrews uh, 9 and 19. It says, For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, this is what I'm referring to, Exodus, the 24th chapter, starting at the really the first verse. But the point gets, you know, the point is around 5 through 7 or 8. It says, He took the, uh, the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying this is the blood of the testament or covenant which the most high had joined onto you who had who did that happen to the israelites it says moreover he sprinkled uh with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. It tells us in uh, Leviticus. Let me get that real quick. Leviticus 17 and 11. Okay. You know what? 
Got to take this phone off of... Uh, Airplane mode. Yeah, Levit Leviticus 11, I'm sorry, 17 and 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul because the life is in the uh is in the blood so if we go back to um hebrews 9 and 22 it says and almost all things let me do this and almost all things are by law purged with blood and without Shedding of blood is no remission or atonement for for uh, sin. Okay, when sin is committed, there is a blood sacrifice needed. It says uh, Hebrews nine and twenty three. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Verse 24 it says, For Yahweh, for Mashiach is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figure of the true, but in heaven itself now to appear in the presence of the Most High. I'm sorry, yeah, in the presence of the Most High for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others, blood of other, uh, meaning the blood of those animals, right? Yahweh didn't have to do that. He offered up himself once. It says, for then must he have, I'm sorry, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once, in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Letting those Israelites know back then that look, you don't have to do them, sac them animal sacrifices no more. Them animal blood sacrifices no more. Uh, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai did ended all that. Okay? We good. Which brings in which he brought in with that sacrifice, the new covenant, or he that sacrifice that Yahweh uh, gave, which was himself, uh, established the new covenant. Yet though we hadn't uh, got it yet, you see. But all the things needed to to make that that second covenant official has been done. Hebrews nine twenty seven. It says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, right? Meaning die in that particular incarnation. All right. And then after we die, our spirit go to the heavenly father and it's judge. You get the judgment, you know, and then you play out that judgment when you come back on the, on the planet in a different flesh all right it says so Yahweh Shai was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation and that this last verse lets us know that salvation right now is only for the elect of the nation of Israel because it says the uh that he was offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him, and we're looking for Yahweh Shai, shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we're looking for the second coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai to come and deliver us. You know, so Lord willing, this lesson was uh, edifying. I know I kind of ran through this uh, verse, I'm sorry, chapter uh, kind of quick, but like I said, 
I believe I said this in the beginning of the video. I know the Apostle of Ramla went into this before, and I'm sure many brothers went into this at different times. I also know the brothers up in Dallas, the elders in Dallas, they like to go into this chapter, and um, I know they did lessons on this, you know, so this was just a same lesson done again, you know. So, Lord willing, this was edifying once again. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. And double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, the men that taught us this truth through the Spirit. And peace and blessings on to the elect of the nation Israel, Shalom.